Assume that you are my boss at a multi-million dollars company. You came to me to know about the financial situation of projects managed by a particular person. In the table shown on your screen, I have a list of six projects. But assume you got tens of projects in your portfolio. What you have to do is go search for that specific person and take your boss to the right and to the left, for example, and here I'm going after Stephen, Stephen here, so the financial situation of project number one, it was planned, the total budget is $250,000, the budget spent is $237,000, and the CPI is 0.83, it's delayed and over budget, and next Stephen is here, and that project is in good standing with the CPI of 108, that will be a time-consuming thing. And especially when you're working with lists containing hundreds of items. That's when we use the pivot tables. In this video, I will show you how to easily and swiftly access the data and information that you require for your projects through the dashboards created using pivot tables. Let's assume the same scenario in the pivot tables that I have created here. So my boss told me that Tell me the financial situation of projects managed by Steven. What's the project category? Steven might be managing a project under any category. I don't know the names of the projects managed by Steven. I only know Steven. I selected Steven. Steven manages two projects which are under construction category. His project A, the sum of the total budget is $250,000 and what he has spent for his project is $237,000. For project F, the situation is like this. Next thing I can do is, I will remove these filters. Let's click here and take the project manager name to the report filter. From here, select the name Steven. Click OK. The project managed by Steven will be shown. So as we know, the project financial status and situation could not be limited only to the sum of total budget and the budget spent. There might be other things I want to see as well. For example, I want to see the CPI of the projects. I'll drag CPI here. So here is the CPI of the projects managed by Steven. And all the other types of information that you want to see. Next, for example, someone asks you, what are the status of your projects under the construction category? From the financial point of view, I'll come to category, I'll select construction. Okay. But since we had the project manager selected here, we'll select all the project managers. Next, someone tells you, let's select all these projects. Someone asks you that show me the projects which are in good standing. Click good standing from the filters here. And there you go, project B and F, which are managed by Chris and Steven, are in good standing. One's in the construction category, one's in the IT category. So how do we create such dynamic dashboards using pivot tables? Let me take you step by step and I hope you watch the video till the end to learn every single step of this video. In order to get started, I copied the information from this spreadsheet and pasted it here. I mentioned in my earlier videos as well, before you get started with analyzing a table or information, first of all, you should convert the information in the spreadsheet to a table. You can do it using two methods. Method number one, click anywhere here, go to insert, click on table. The table will show you the boundaries. And here the project summary, the table name is shown. as. So I will exclude the, the table's name and only select the table itself. Click OK. And OK. This is one method. Let's control Z and go to and go back to the initial form. Next method that you can create a table is click anywhere in the table, 
hold control key, press T. Change the boundaries. Okay. Change the boundaries, sorry. Okay, and okay. Your table will be shown to you. Once this is shown, when you have your table, let's change its design too, or maybe you want to leave it the current set. So let's change the design and make it more simpler. So once this is shown, select the table, go to insert, go to pivot table. You can give the table a name and the location that the pivot table will be created. So choose new worksheet, click OK. Now, what information do you want to see in your pivot table? Let's create a pivot table just like this. In here, the information that I want to see is the project name and the row level. Next, I want to see the total budget of the project and the values and the actual budget of the project, the budget spent of the project under the values. We had here, we could filter this by the status of different projects. So we want to leave the category, status, milestones achieved, milestones remaining, and project manager names as filters. We come to our pivot table. Category should be in report filter. Just select it and drag it there. And project manager name should be there. And status should be there. So for example, if I come and select the project manager name, for example, projects managed by Chris, it will show me only two projects. If I select Steven, the number, the names of the projects, and the details I selected in here will be shown for the projects managed by Steven. Next thing is, I want to create a chart out of this table, a chart as it's shown in here. Let's zoom it out a bit to 80 persons. In order to insert the chart, go to Pivot Table Tools, Pivot Chart. Select the type of chart and OK. In here, as you can see, a large number of buttons is displayed. Go to Analyze, click on Field Buttons, they will disappear. Now let's format our chart a little bit. For example, remove these lines, remove the values from this axis, and go to Layout, Data Labels, Outside End. As you can see here, the data labels are rotated. We will go here and select them, right click, Format Data Labels. We will come to Alignment. It should be minus 90 degrees. OK. Same we will do for the sum of total budgets. Right click, Format Data Labels. Go to Alignment and make it minus 90 degrees. OK. And Let's bring these to the bottom. OK. Let's change the colors from the data series. Let's give them a bit of space. And let's format its colors. Go to Format, Shape, Fill. This will do it. And moreover, let's Form a chart area and remove its fill and remove its border color. OK. From the view, we will remove the grid lines. Now, in order to have buttons like we had in here, for whichever you click, the information for the specific thing will be displayed. If you click many, information for a lot of them will be displayed. These are called slicers. In order to insert them, come here, go to Insert, and click Slicer. OK. Slicers for what do we want? For project name, for category, for project manager name, and for status. You can have slicers for the rest as well if you like to. 
So the slicers are inserted here. In order to edit your slicers, for example, I want to make it smaller, click from here, same. For the slicer tools, you can change your slicers height, your weight, and the coloring and everything for your slicer, like I did for this one. I will format the next slicers and we'll get back to you. As you can see, I have colored my slicers and if I click any of them, the project is managed by only Chris or project managed by Chris and Gary, for example, projects managed only by Omar or maybe if, you, if I want to select different project manager names, I'll click, for example, Chris and next I want to select Omar. I'll hold the control key, I'll click Omar and the project will be shown. Same you can do for the rest. The next one is, since we have created a filter here, I want to remove this filter. It will select all the, all the, all the names there. So click on this remove filter and all the names will be selected. Same you can do from the filter section here. For example, I want to see projects only in the construction field. Okay, the slicers will be updated automatically. And this is how the pivot tables and slicers work. One more thing I should not forget is that as you can see in here, I have named the, I have renamed the slicer names. That's done from here. Click on slicer tools. As you can see, it's the project's name, so we will rename it to choose the project name. It will appear in here, choose the project name. You can do it for the rest of two. I hope you like the contents in this video. If you did so, please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. Thank you very much for watching.